Hi, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do moving average. Moving average is a technique which allows us to take out the outliers and observe the trend in any given data set. Now I will show you how to calculate the moving average. Let's get started. In the sum, we are given with the year, the actual demand, and they are asking us to forecast for the seventh year. When we talk about moving averages, the moving averages can be for a three-year period, or it can be for a four-year, or it can be for five, seven, nine, and it goes on. Here, we are asked to do it for the three-year moving average. Let me show you. We are going to take the data in a pair of three years each. For doing the forecast for the first year, we do not have any data previously, so we are leaving it empty. In order to do the forecast for the second year, we have gotten only one year, and as a result of that, we will not be able to do the calculation. Looking at the third year, again prior to the third year, we have gotten only two year data for which we will not be able to do the calculation. For the fourth year, we have gotten three years data. Starting from here, we should be able to calculate 310 plus 365 plus 395. This is divided by 3 because this is a 3 year moving average. This will give us 1070 divided by 3. And the final forecast for the year 4 is 357 units. In order to calculate the demand for the fifth year, we need three years data from here. So this is first year, second year, and third year. So we are going to leave 310, and then we are going to take this three year data. 415 plus 395 plus 365 divided by three. This will give us 1175 divided by 3 and the final answer is 392. So once we have finished for the fifth year, let's move on to the sixth year. Moving backward, we need three year data 1, 2, and 3 year data 450 plus 415 plus 395 divided by 3. This will give us 1260 divided by 3 and we get 420 units. Now we have to calculate it for the seventh year. For the seventh year, we need last three year period. So the last three year period becomes sixth year, fifth year, and fourth year. So the demand for the seventh year can be calculated with 465 plus 450 plus 415 divided by 3. This will give us 1330 divided by 3. The answer is 443 units. The demand for the seventh year is 443 units. So for example, if at all they are asking you to calculate for the four years, first four years data, you are going to take 1, 2, 3, 4 and you will be calculating the demand for the fifth year onwards. So how many ever number of data that's given there? Those number of years you are going to leave it empty. Have a look at the fourth year data. We could see the actual demand was 415 and the forecasted demand was 357, which means there is a huge variation in the way we have forecasted the data. This and forecasting we call this as an error. Let's calculate the error for the given information. Error can be calculated only when you have the actual data and when you have the forecast data. And for the period one, we do not have any forecast here. Not only for period one, even when you look into period two and period three, we do not have any forecast demand. So we will not be able to calculate the forecast error for the period 1 to 3 and the same goes with the year 7 also because we do not have the actual data for 7 year. 
which means we have gotten the data only for fourth year, fifth year and for the sixth year. We will be calculating the error only for these years. Let's check in how to do that. For calculating the error, we are going to take actual value minus forecast value. For the period 4, we have got the actual data and the forecasted data. So we will have 415 minus 357. This will give us 58. For the second period, it's 450 minus 392. This will give us 58 again. Let's calculate it for the sixth year. The actual demand is 465 minus the forecast demand is 420. We have 45. Once we have finished the error, we need to take the absolute of error. Why or what is the reason behind it? When you look into this data, we have all positive value. But by any chance had we had a negative value of minus 58, you can easily see this value and this value gets sorted out and we are going to have only 45. So only for this reason, we turn these values into a positive value. So when we take the absolute value of it, 58 will become 58. If it was minus 58, when we take the absolute of this, it will become plus 58 and 45 will become 45. Now, I want to calculate the mean absolute deviation. The mean absolute deviation is calculated by taking the sum of the error and dividing it by the period. The sum of the error gives us 58, again 58 plus 45 divided by the total number of errors that we have. We have calculated the error only for three periods for the period 4, 5 and 6. This will give us 161 divided by 3. We get a value of 53.66 and we can turn this approximately to 54. So the mean absolute deviation is 54. Let's move on to calculate the mean square error. For calculating the mean square error, we are going to square the errors. 58 square will give us 3364. Again, 58 when it is squared, it will give us 3364. And then 45 square will give us 2025. For calculating MSE, we are going to take the sum of these three, 3364 plus 3364 plus 2025 divided by 3. This will give us a value of 8753 divided by 3. And the final result is 2917. The mean square error is 2917. Once we have finished calculating MSE, at the next level we have to calculate MAPE. MAPE in other terms known as mean absolute percentage error. For calculating mean absolute percentage error, we need error divided by actual demand into 100. MAPE for the fourth year is error is 58 and the actual demand is 415. So for calculating this, we will have 58 divided by 415 into 100. This will give us 13.97 percentage. For the fifth period, the error is 58 and the actual demand is 450. 58 divided by 450 into 100. We have 12.88 percentage mean absolute percentage error for the period 6 is 45 divided by 465 this gives us 9.67 percentage we have calculated the percentage error for the period 4 5 and 6 now we have to do a sum of these three 13.97 plus 12.88 plus 9.67. This gives us 
0.52. We have arrived to the sum of 36.52. Now we have to calculate the mean. So we are dividing it by the total number of errors. It's for the three period. This will give us 12.17 percentage. The mean absolute percentage error is 12.17 percentage. We have done with the calculation of simple moving average and then we have forecasted mean absolute deviation, mean square error and mean absolute percentage error. If you have any questions, please do leave it in the chat box. I'm happy to help. Thanks for joining me. This is Karpakam signing off. Good day.